Okay, we're still talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we've seen several, several examples where the area under a function is given by the antiderivative or the integral of that function. So something like this, you have some function f, and if you imagine a line here at some x value, and x is increasing, so this line is moving to the right, and as it moves to the right, it sweeps out some area under this graph, we'll call that area a, and the area under f from 0 to x is given by the antiderivative of this original function f. So as x moves, the area as x moves to the right, that area a increases. And write write this in your notes. The area under f of x from 0 from 0 to x is this function a of x that function that value of a the area itself depends on where x is so a is a function of f so that's a of x where a is the antiderivative of f Okay, so make a note of that. The area under the function from 0 to x is itself a function, a of x, where that function a is the antiderivative of the original function. Now we saw several examples, several simple numerical examples where that is the case. But the question is, is that always the case? Seeing that it is the case in just a few specific examples doesn't mean it is always the case. So we raise this question, is it always the case? And in fact it is. So let's look at a general case. Draw some function in here. Could be any function. This is our x-axis and some function of x. And imagine some vertical line here at some x value. And we're dealing with this area here. And now imagine x increasing. So x moves to the right a little bit. So we have this horizontal increment here. That's our delta x. So x moves to the right some amount, delta x. And that gives us this corresponding change in area here, delta a. So you see an increase in x and an increase in the area. As x moves to the right, as that line moves forward, the area increases. And moving forward, this, this incremental distance, delta x, gives us this increase in area, delta a. So as before, this line started at 0, and it moves to the right. But the thing to think about is, think about delta x and the corresponding delta a. Now how can we calculate that delta a? Well, it's almost a rectangle. It has a width here, and it has a height here. So we could calculate that area, that delta A, as a height times a width. Height times width. The problem is that's not exactly a rectangle. The top is not flat. Okay, but let's zoom in here and think about this. The top of that rectangle is not flat. If we zoom in on that region, it would look something like this. The graph, the function here, is descending at that point, and then this rectangle that I'm drawing here would either have, I could, I could cut my rectangle short down below, so this is my delta A, like that, in which case I have this region up here which represents an error in my calculation. So that's an error region. Or I might have um, my rectangle like this. I might have a rectangle that overestimates the area. So I might have a, a delta A like this, but then this region up above would be an overestimation. So either way, I have an error up there at the top of that rectangle, trying to calculate the, the area of that rectangle. Because I'm moving to the right in finite increments of delta x each time, all of those little error regions will add up, and I'll have some error in the final calculation. 
but of course there's a solution to this problem and the solution is to move forward in infinitely small increments so if you make your delta x infinitely small this little error region up at the top becomes infinitely small which means the error disappears so in your notes turn to the next graph there draw your curve again that's your function f and draw your vertical line so this this vertical line is advancing to the right and it's sweeping out some area as it goes and instead of moving forward delta x and having a corresponding delta a we move forward this infinitely small amount so I'll draw that really thin and I'll recognize that I'm, I'm really thinking of it as being infinitely thin and this horizontal increment right here from one side to the other that's dx an infinitely small change in x and this little area a increases by this infinitely small amount dA and now I can actually calculate that area I know that area is height times width so in this case my area is this little tiny sliver of area dA and the height is the value of the function this is function f here at some x value so the height is f of x and the width the width of that little dA is dx so dA is f of x times dx and you can see that right there you can see that this little sliver of area right here this infinitely thin sliver of area is going to be the height times the infinitely small width right there height times width so this f of x dx is really just an area calculation height times width and that area is that little tiny sliver dA now take this equation right here and watch this just take that and divide by dx on both sides and what do you get if you divide by dx you basically rearrange that equation if you divide by dx on both sides you get dA dx equals f of x how about that the derivative of the area function is f of x my original function and that is pretty cool if the derivative of the area function is f then we can say that the antiderivative of f is the area function and that reasoning right there will apply to any differentiable function